I have been very impressed by the way that the videos are linked to the articles on the JW.org website. I thought the presentation was very, very good indeed. And um, there's so much material there. It's, it's a very comprehensive site. I, I've been impressed. I'm glad. I'm glad it's designed to appeal to the, the many different people from different backgrounds. So that is the aim. Um, when you were given the, the book, uh, were you told that it was a Bible study aid? Um, I knew that. Yeah. I'd been looking at it looking at it online for several several months um one of the chapters um although i find the presentation extremely good um one of the things that that bothers me is some of the statements and some of the content that i don't quite understand when i did go to church which was many years ago now um some of the teachings were different for instance lesson 39 god's view of blood that yeah uh, i was a bit concerned about that um, paragraph one, it's three lines. Do you mind if I read it, please? Yeah, I've got it up front to me as well. Um, Jehovah told his worshippers in Bible times, the life of every sort of flesh is its blood. Leviticus 17.14 To Jehovah, blood represents life. Since life is sacred or holy, a gift from God, blood is also sacred. Um, well, yeah, I, I've got the Bible here. Um, it does say that a person is to be cut off who breaks, who breaks the commandment on blood. That's um, twice in that uh, chapter at verse 10, Leviticus 17.10. Uh, that person who eats blood and will, be, and will cut him off from amongst his people. And then verse 14, the verse quoted, whoever eats it, it that's the blood, shall be cut off. But if you read the next verse, verse 15, which your book didn't quote, it simply says that someone who breaks the commandment on blood, the cutting off in this particular context is just until they have a ritual bath, they clean their clothes, they have a ritual bath called a mikvah in, in, in water, and then they're, they're clean and they go back into the congregation that very day. I'll read it. I'll read from verse 14. Um, for... For it is Leviticus chapter 17, verses 14 and 15. Yeah. For it is the life of all flesh, its blood sustains its life. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, you shall not eat the blood of any flesh. For the life of all flesh is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. And every person who eats what died naturally, or what was torn by beasts, whether he is a native of your own country or a stranger... He shall both wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Then he shall be clean. So that was the um, solution for eating eating blood. You just had a ritual washing in water and then you were ritually clean. No one was disfellowship for the rest of their life with no one allowed to speak to them because they broke the commandment on blood. Surely verse 15 explains so, uh, verse 14. Uh, am, I, am I right in saying that you ever know someone who's been the fellowship? Or are you the fellowship yourself? I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. I used to go to a Baptist and a Pentecostal church. Uh, I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. Okay. But it, it's not only Leviticus that talks about abstaining from blood. Well, we, we, we need to focus on one thing at a time. If you want to look at other verses, that's fine. But do you have any response to Leviticus 17, 14 and 15? 14 and 15? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to Jehovah's Witnesses, we view that uh, Jehovah God views life as precious. And when he said that, because this isn't quite the... This, this isn't actually the, the law here, is it? It's talking about if someone accidentally does it. It's not like you can just, it's not a ritual where you would go away. It is. Commit, commit the act. It is. It, um, it's, a, it's a ritual watching. If you break the commandment um, on blood, you're to have a ritual washing in clothes, a ritual washing in water. You wash your body and you wash your clothes in water. 
uh, and then you're clean and you go back into the camp. So you're, you're, you are cut off from the people of God for literally a few hours. But the very day you break the commandment of blood, on blood, you go back into the camp after having this ritual washing. Other uh, versions of the Bible, other translations, where it says they'd be cut off or put to death. Other contexts. After wash, once you've been, you've been cut off. The words cut off in Leviticus 17.10 and Leviticus 17.14 are applicable to verse 15. Now, elsewhere in the Bible, cut off does mean killed. I agree with you. In different contexts, hundreds of years later, okay, you can find passages that talk about people being cut off and it means that they're killed. But the context would be hundreds of years later in completely different contexts. The context for cut off in Leviticus 17.10 and Leviticus 17.14 is there to be expelled from the camp of Israel until they wash both their body and their clothes in water. Leviticus 17.15, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Then he shall be clean. Are you, are you telling me that as Jehovah's Witnesses you believe that you should kill people who break the commandment on blood? Absolutely not. We're, we're, not, we're not judges. Uh, we're is, the judge of God. So what does the Bible say in Leviticus 17.14? Whoever eats it, meaning blood, shall be cut off. Leviticus 17.14, what does that mean? Yeah, I, I know that, but what does cut off mean? Well, if, in, in the study Bible that I've got, there's a little uh, footnote, and it says, well, put to death. But we, as Jehovah's Witnesses, are not under the Mosaic law. Well, if you're not we under don't... the Mosaic law, then this commandment on blood is not applicable to you at all. Because this was a well, commandment of the uh, Mosaic law about not eating blood. Uh, you, you, you said that you've actually studied chapter 39 of the Enjoy Life Forever, so you know that yes. in Acts, Paul also reiterated this command. Uh, no, he didn't. No, no, he so didn't. Paul, Paul. In Acts 15, 28, 29. <clears throat> so you've got nothing more to say on Leviticus seventeen fifteen. No, because we don't, we don't stick rigidly with one section, one scripture, where you look at the principle behind it. What is the principle? The principle is to abstain from blood, to not eat it, to not, not take it. Why? We want blood Why do you abstain from blood? From God. Why do you abstain from blood? I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses are not kosher. You don't you you eat normal meat from the supermarket. You don't eat kosher meat that's been specially bled. But we wouldn't go out deliberately. Pardon? And eat something. Pardon? We wouldn't go out and deliberately eat something that we knew had blood in it. Like say we wouldn't have. Uh, you uh, eat normal uh, meat. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are not kosher. Have have I got that right? That's right. Yeah. So you eat normal meat that hasn't been specially bled. No, but we the kosher the fact, way. We think, uh, you know, we, we, we don't actually debate with, with people. We, we present the information as found in God's Word, and it's bound to people if they decide to, to do that. We, we've made our decision. We've studied the Bible throughout, and we've come to the uh, decisions that we wanted in harmony with God's Word. We, we don't we don't sit in debates, these sort of things. The, the scriptures are clear. Um, what is a debate? Surely it's just a discussion with rules. For instance, each side is to have equal time. You agree a topic you're going to discuss. That's all a debate is. There's nothing, um, there's nothing sinful about having a debate. Um, didn't didn't Paul debate in the synagogue? Didn't Paul debate in the synagogue? I think it's Acts 17, somewhere in Acts 17. He also walked away when people showed that they were actually not interested in what the scriptures had to say. Well, I 
showed you what the scripture said at Leviticus 17.15. What does cut off mean there? Just just explain. Leviticus 17.14, what does cut off mean? We, we I don't, agree I don't that. explain it to you. Pardon? I don't actually need to explain that to you. The scriptures are there for you to make your mind up. Okay. Um, yeah, but I'm asking you... Not for me to, to tell you how I, I view it. I've made my mind up, so... Well, lots of people have made their mind up. Mormons have made their mind up. <laughs> Atheists have made their mind up. Scientologists have made their mind up. Seventh-day Adventists have made their mind up. You know, if someone asks you a question about your book, it, it's surely reasonable for you to say, well, I'll give you an answer and explain my book to you it says they shall be cut off you shall not eat the blood leviticus seventeen fourteen of any flesh for the life of all flesh is its blood whoever eats it shall be cut off what does cut off mean in that context what's it mean to you no i'm asking please don't answer a question back if i ask you a question you can say you don't want to answer it but please don't play games with me and ask a question back what does that verse mean to it be was, cut it off was lovely talking to you but this is the thing we're not we're not here to debate. So if you really want, I want to an understand answer, your book, and you're not being helpful. I mean, this is important to me to obey Jehovah God, and do the will of Jehovah God. I thought I heard you say they're to be killed. No, I said that's what the what said that they well, could all just prevented. If you think it means killed, why don't you kill people? That's what Jehovah says. Shouldn't you do what Jehovah is telling I'm you to do? Conversation, but it was nice to have a little chat with you, but uh, we're not here to debate. So thanks for What are that. you frightened of? Uh, what are you frightened of? Oh, well, um, clearly cut off in Leviticus 17.14 means that they shall, they're cut off from God's people until they have a ritual bath. He shall, verse 15, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe, that's his body in water, and be unclean until evening, then he shall be clean. So it's got nothing to do with cut off means killing people. But if, if cut off does mean killing people, then that's what Jehovah's Witnesses should do today, if that's what God is, is telling them to do. Um, another verse we never got onto was Leviticus 14.21, which says that if you have an animal that's um, killed by another animal and it's left beside the roadside, I guess we'd call it roadkill today, uh, you can give that animal, which has not been properly bled, you can sell it to a foreigner. Uh, Leviticus 14.21 You shall not eat anything that dies of itself. You may give it to the alien who is within your gates, that he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. So they were allowed to sell what we would call road roadkill to foreigners who lived amongst them. So clearly the commandment on, on blood was applicable to Israel. It wasn't applicable to the non-Jewish people who lived amongst them to the foreigners who lived amongst them although if those foreigners broke the commandment on blood like the jews all they had to do was to have a ritual bath and then they would be clean um i, I wanted the jehovah's witness to explain that verse maybe i was too aggressive with him but i mean you just get fed up with these these people um and their insistence that they don't debate i mean they they appear to be they appear to be rather um, difficult to speak to because all they want to do is to preach at you. Jehovah's Witnesses are not kosher. If they had to obey these commandments on blood, surely Jehovah's Witnesses would be, would be kosher if they think that the commandments of Leviticus and Deuteronomy apply to Jehovah's Witnesses today. Furthermore, Jehovah's Witnesses have had um, a huge number of different positions on blood during their history. Um, an early watchtower from 1909 approved of blood transfusions and said they were a good thing. It's, a, it's been only since 1945 that they banned blood transfusions. 
And since the 1980s, they have uh, changed this position on blood transfusions radically over a roughly 10 year period. They liberalized their position on banning um, blood transfusions in the 1980s by allowing factors of various blood products. So since the 1980s, they've allowed um, fractions from plasma, fractions from white blood cells, fractions from platelets and fractions from red blood cells. That's basically you separate the blood into its component parts and then you um, derive blood fractions from those products. So Jehovah's Witnesses can imbibe all of the um, parts of blood today. Blood is made out of water, plasma, red and white blood cells and platelets. And Jehovah's Witnesses are allowed to have all of those things provided they have them separately. It's, it's an insane position, um, provided they're fractions. Um, imagine if I said to you, uh, the Bible forbids you to eat a cheese sandwich. Cheese sandwiches are made out of three things, uh, bread, butter, and cheese. Now, the Bible forbids you to have a cheese sandwich, but you are allowed to eat separately bread, and then you can have butter separate to bread, and you can have cheese as long as the cheese is eaten separately to the bread and the butter. I mean, it's, it's insane. If the Bible says you're not allowed to have a cheese sandwich, then, then why are you allowed to have the three products of the cheese sandwich, bread, butter and cheese, as long as you eat them separately? It's insane. And the same thing with Jehovah's Witnesses. They um, willingly go to their deaths or allow their their children to die because of this insane position from these lunatic old men in New York and there's no consistency about their position. It really is a position that has no consistency at all. It's, it's a lunatic position that's, that's led to the deaths of many, many people and needs to be opposed.